Hi, my name is Steven Armour. I'm the creator of PyLTARS, Arch, which is a GitHub organization to showcase how to use Python for engineering applications. Right now, I'm the sole contributor, Erm, Earl, and I specialize in electrical engineering and optics. And in this video, I'm going to be going over how to use is Py I Spice, which is a MG Spice wrapper uh, written in, written in Python, and the IPython widgets to create interactive learning tools for AuthAmp topologies using the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, all right, so to get started, all right, we're going to go to the PySpice examples repository all right, under PyLCars, which is a play on Star Trek act by the computer access and approval system. And here in the readme, maybe there's a direct link to the notebook we want, which because it's got uh, Jupyter Notebook widgets in it, it, or I should say IPython Notebook widgets in it, it's not going to really, you can't really just see it, it on uh, GitHub. Uh, so we're going to go but I'm going to, for the sake of this tutorial, go to operate, go through how to find this and go, go over the repository in case you want to contribute. Um, in this repository, you're going to see a lot of .pngs. These are the drawings for the MOS, for the op-amp topologies that are all made in draw.io, which is the uh, source source files right there. Okay. And this is the uh, Jupyter Notebook we're after. Okay. And so I use a combination of uh, some LaTeX environments for uh, the notebook and the uh, widgets so this really isn't going to show like this isn't rendering property properly um, a a this the one that doesn't have any GUI on it will show oh, results but if you go on 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 this one show with uh, the GUIs won't show anything and so you'll need to download this if um, the minimum thing you're going to have to do, it'll, the minimum file set you need is you're going to need this operational amplifier our topologies folder. You're also going to need to go out and install the um, IPy widgets, widgets and enable them and for your notebook. Oh, the instructions are right here on the Jupyter widgets uh, readme. Okay. You also need to have uh, PySpice installed, odd, odd and which is a wrapper around ng spice so you'll need to have that installed as well and as far as i know oh you can install that on windows but i've never done it and i don't ever plan to is i'm using a linux mint computer um so the op -amp, amp topologies is based off this example oh, on how to simulate an operational amplifier in fact i'm using his model model of a op amp topology it's a semi-perfect one it's got a single pole in it it um, so to run this, 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 I'm going to open up a terminal oh, where I have the um, folder in the notebook and uh, look, um, download it out. And I'm going to start it up by typing Jupyter Notebook right, with the Pionic spelling. And that's going to open up a new browser window. Oh, and I'm going to hide this terminal. Oh, we really don't need it anymore. So that's now hid. So I'm going to go into the operational amplifier topologies folder, and I'm going to open, start up the op amp, amp learn. And so this is going to bring up, up a uh, new tab with the notebook. Look, and everything's going to be started up. All the add-ons I have are going to start up. So it's now running properly. Okay. So I go through, oh, and I'm running shift enter. If you don't know how to use the Jupyter notebook, look, there's lots of material on it, how to use these. Is and so the main thing you need to do ooh, is like I said have everything installed all the prerequisites installed but you need to run this this first cell absolutely you need to get everything all the libraries loaded um, ignore this landify too that's something that I'm probably gonna use down in the future um, so the op amp model all oh, we're using a semi ideal op amp which means it does no saturation so the rails are not so it does not have rail limiting ing it does have a single pole all, all inside of it. It um, it and it's only got a 10 mega ohm um, um, uh, input resistance between the non-inverting and inverting terminal, and it's got a 10 nano ohm output resistance. And, um, theoretically, you could put uh, any op amp into this, this, but for sake of copyright and patent law uh, I just don't want to deal with it but you could uh, theoretically go and modify this and import or a op amp from analog devices for example oh and 
kind of play with and see what's going on. On, um, so we implement this uh, off amp amp by creating a sub circuit right that implements this topology here. There, yeah. and so we give it the name, name it the spice name, and it's going to see when the netlist is generated. Hit it. We give it its nodes, or I like I prefer to say terminals, terminals, and inside the instant and the initiate it for this subclass. Uh, we instance this inherited subclass. Uh, we create the input resistor over between the two terminals. We create the uh, first gain section, and we create the buffer buffer section. So we have the voltage or voltage sources. We have the pole. We have the resistors. Ours, uh, we have names and for the terminals over in the devices. So we have to instantiate that. Next is a uh, test bench. For this test bench, I'm using a one volt old uh, sine wave source. Or it's on a 50 ohm um, ohm load, load, and the output's going to a 50 ohm dummy load. Uh, this is the first test bench, which is a uh, one port through or two terminal old test bench. Bench. As I add more topologies that need more or uh, advanced test benches, I will implement those as needed. And but this is the, the real workhorse of this notebook. So this is creates an instance of the circuit class. class and in it, we uh, when we create this, we're going to instantiate this class. We're going to pass it, it the instant. Um, we're going to pass it the op amp as topology we want. So the DUT argument. And that's going to bind on that topology into the instance of the circuit. Then we're going to going to run the setup up circuit method. Now this has a uh, keywords args that we can put a dictionary of parameters and values that we want for that SIP's op amp topology and that will be created and passed to the system. There is a simple AC analysis that's going to just generate a body plot. So I've got the data. Uh, so the raw results are going to self.results on the data is being somewhat processed this is self.data where a port of frequency, the voltage in, the voltage out, it calculate the gain in decibels, levels, and I calculate the phase is and I'm using phase information. And then there's also a plotting routine which will create the Bode plots. So let's we have to instantiate that. There's some definitions, definitions of op amps. Um, so this is this cell is a markdown cell, uses markdown. Um, so take MathJack has to render it, which can cause a little bit things to be unsettled while it's rendering. So here we have the most basic op amp topology: the buffer. Or down below, it, I've got the derivations. And now, unlike a normal, like a most spice in life software, there I don't even want to call this software. There, there we don't have a, a GUI interface. Okay, so everything is done programmatically. Uh, Eventually, I like to change that at, that we can have uh, renderings, but that's down the road really quite a bit. So we create an instance of our buffer or topology by creating another subcircuit. Okay, so we have the two terminals, or we have the name, and in the initiate, we bind it in the uh, op amp that we're using, which is that uh, semi-ideal op amp. 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 So we create, we bring it into the sub circuit via calling another sub circuit, and then we bring it in and by creating the self dot x. We give it the name, I am the instance, and so we give it the name of what we're using, and then we give it the terminals. Those, those are the uh, what are called net names, and then I've also added another method in here, which is a static method, so you don't have to create this in a circuit so you need to run this theory method. And this theory method it will allow will print out this theory that I've gone through on your screen, which is really nice as a reference. And eventually, I'm going to have the values in the theory affect the simulation, and the simulate values get passed to the simulation show up on the theory. But that's down the road. So I run the theory just to show. Oh, we get the theory, and I run this. Like I said, we create an instance of our test bench. We bind it in the uh, buffer. Uh, there's no parameters, so we just call all setup circuit directly. We run simulate it, we run plot results, alts, we hit shift enter on that cell and we get at our results. Alts. Now I've also instituted a very primitive uh, th uh, 3D viewfinder 
I would not trust it for uh, more complicated Bodhi plots. Just something, just a nice thing to do. Um, so this is the first one we're going to have. Ha the inverting amplifier is the first one we're going to have where we're going to have uh, parameters. First one is going to be the input resistance. Second one is going to be the feedback resistance, R2. So we inst instantiate those two resistors in our uh, sub-circuit circuit here. We create our op amp up here, here. We write up all the theory right here. Run it, run it. We get theory, and and this from now on, on what I've done is I've created uh, these GUIs. These that allow you to have interactive control, which is why part of the reason why I'm making this video is to show you how to utilize those if you're not familiar with VI Python widgets. So in this GUI, we're creating a class that does the GUI. We've got two parts. One is the instant is the initiate, which creates our front end, which is I'm just using sliders for this. So the sliders are um, they're going to be scaled up to kilo ohms in the back end, but we're just running from 10 to 100 kilo ohms. Ohms for both of these, we're going to bind all the sliders into a layout, and then we're going to bind them to the back end using the interact manual. And interact manual all is going to create a another little widget edit button. That will actually run the back end and when we click it instead of just running every time we move the sliders and because um, just with more complicated simulations this could take a little bit it we do not want that running every time we move something because it would drive us absolutely bonkers and then there's a display that shows the thing in the back end and we do exactly like we did it with a buffer we create an instance of the test bench but in this case we buy an inverting or an op amp topology to it we run the setup circuit it, and this is all automatically done as you'll see and in this case we give it a keyword arguments dictionary so we have the r1 value and we're scaling the uh, value from the r1 slider all right so the slider value goes into the interact the interact goes to the back end the back end then passes that value down here we scale up to kilohertz i mean kilo ohms run simulate and run the results oh so we cr bind that into memory and then we hit or thing and like I said, it's not going to show anything until we hit this run interactive. And it's going to print out the netlist, and there's our simulation. And so let's say I increase the feedback resistance. So you can see we start actually getting some gain. And you can see the phase is constant and at uh, 180 degrees. Yes. These, and we see our 3 dB point, oint, oint, oint right there. Um, going on we have a uh, non-inverting running amplifier same deal now so hit run 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 and we see the outputs right. so there's no o change in the phase so which is why it's non-inverting running here we have a miller capacitive integrator there there we just swapped out uh, the feedback resistor with the capacitance and and there's theory uh, for the GUI. We we just swap out that slider either with the capacitor slider either. Put the right units units down the label, and we scaled appropriately down to the picofarads down on the back end. And 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 we hit run interact, and we see we have an integrator. All right, and we can see what happens when we bring down that first resistor and bring up the capacitance and right now none of these values have been really optimized I haven't optimized the frequency ranges into the simulations patients that's on the to-do list right now I just want to keep adding topologies topologies and feet and test benches benches and I'm hoping to have more contributors who can play with this a little bit it and and optimize those uh, good I'm not gonna go through all these but we have Miller inductive Integrator, we have a one pass, low pass, uh, one pole filter. Right. So this one has um, three parameters. As we can see, run the interact. Right. You get, see, again, like I said, nothing's optimized. Uh, we have differentiator, iter, vector differentiators, there's high pass, one pole. I mean one zero again 
Here we have an all pass filter, which you don't see that often in many uh, beginning textbooks this on, on uh, op amp theory. Um, so the all pass filter, or if you look at it, it's got a non inverting amplifier uh, uh, here, but it really, unless you unbounce these resistors, it doesn't actually provide any amplitude gain. What it does, and all pass filters go by another name called phase filters, is that it will change the phase of the signal that you have going through. For instance, if you have a sine wave going into your input right here, and you have a 90 degree phase shift if, if at the frequency you're running at, you've now just changed that sine into a cosine without having to create another generator later. So you can actually take one generator and pull that off and create various phase variations of that generator. Or which is nice to do like an analog um, uh, IQ filter. All right, so I've instituted it here, create a GUI, run it, and run it, it, and we see again like there's zero gain here. We can see e, e that we have zero phase is changed change after about ten to the third hertz. hertz. But here we have 90 degrees, so if we ran a sine wave in, our sine wave running in at this frequency right here, it's about 10 to the 2, 2 hertz, hertz is now outputting a cosine. All right. uh, we have a second variation, and let me real quickly, let me unbounce those resistors, so I'm going to adjust that feedback twister up. I run interact, and our phase hasn't changed all that much, but we now do have some gain in going on. Uh, and actually, we have two drops. Uh, so like I said, uh, that that was just playing around to add that uh, 3 dB point on your indicator. We have a second version with capacitor er, ers on on the ground. Um, and here we have sal and key filter er, er from uh, Kraftwitz and Gregory. Uh, analog electronic circuit systems and signal processing, which is a really nice book, uh, by the way. Um, so this is a little bit different from a standard sale and key filter that you'll see in that we're using a non-inverting inverting amplifier in the amp in the op amp section. A typical sale and key will use just a buffer, and in most sale and key filters, you will not have an emittance this emittance Y2. So you'll just have a feedback resistor and this divider network work into the non-inverting terminal oh. so the generalized uh, transfer function here here so AV is going to be uh, transfer is going to be the gain that you're going to get it out of the uh, buffer non-verting section section and then those are the its dependencies of the transfer function function all these emittances yes. so I've got uh, both a low pass band pass and a high pass implemented so there's the low pass there's GUI run it and here we can see a very good low pass filter. Um, let's adjust one of these. I have no idea what's going to happen, but that's why I created this. And we see a lot more rounding, rounding in the filter that's versus before it was really, really sharp. Um, it's got a band pass, pass and uh, so on. Um, so I hope you uh, download this notebook. Look, play with it. Uh, get started with Pi Spice. Ice. Um, like I said, I'm trying to treat this as a blog. I'm adding a new topology, one or two topologies, or making improvements here and there, there once a week. Make. Um, and I'd like to give it a shot. And so with this, if you notice, this is just going to run this high pass one. Um, I'm kind of generating a netlist pretty raw on netlist, and I'm kind of using really very virtual devices, like very ideal devices. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Dave Vanderbilt. Oh, sorry, Dave, if I butchered your last name. Name uh, to his library, a which is a uh, Skydal, oh, which is a um, Python library that can create these uh, netlists a lot more, a lot nicer, or and will play nice with a PCB e designer like KiCad. And so uh, check it out. Um, if you'd like to contribute to uh, PySpice examples, go feel free to do so. Oh, as long as it's uh, good material, here I'll try to integrate it as best I can. And thank you.